So I decided to do a buster only, no damage run of all of the Mega Man X Mavericks. Why? Couple reasons. Number one, I actually missed out on experiencing some of the game because I only ever used their weaknesses as soon as I had them. Some of these bosses are actually much more interesting if you don't use their weaknesses, so I thought, well, let's try that then. And number two, why the hell not? This is one of my favorite games and I'll look for any excuse to play it. So without any further ado, here we go with number eight. I don't think there's any surprises here that Chill Penguin's number eight. His attacks are pretty easy to dodge and plus he telegraphs everything that he's about to do. Anytime that he's throwing ice balls or he's got his ice breath or he's sliding across the screen, he'll throw his head back for like a second, giving you time to prepare to get out of the way of whatever he's about to do. Storm Eagle is just a tiny bit maybe more challenging than Chill Penguin. I mean, honestly, if I, I could have switched these around in my rankings and it wouldn't have made that much of a difference. Most of his attacks don't actually do any damage to you, they just push you away. As long as you have the dash upgrade, it's easy to counter, and even without it, it's still possible to beat him. You just need to time it well, especially when he's doing his dive bomb attacks. Flame Mammoth is a little bit more challenging, especially when we're doing a no damage run. His fire blasts are pretty fast, but as long as you maintain enough distance, they won't actually reach you. His jumps also cover quite a bit of ground, even from off screen, so try not to let yourself get cornered by him. If you can time your jumps so you can be in the air just as he's landing, that'll actually save you a lot of trouble. Also, here's a little bit of interesting trivia. Did you know that you can actually cut off his trunk with a boomerang cutter? I didn't know that. I thank Lord Beerus for telling me that. Coming in at number 5 is Spark Mandrel. What makes him a little bit more dangerous is how quickly he can cover ground, his punch dash, which will knock you off the wall, 
and his electric spark attack, which will travel the floor and ride the walls as well. He's very vulnerable to charge shots when he's hanging from the ceiling, so do your damage there. Just try not to get under him. And number four is Armored Armadillo. This one took a bit to figure out, but the big takeaway is don't even bother with charged shots. Even if they do land, they don't do any more damage to him than regular ones. If you hit him with a charged shot when his guard is up, he'll release that energy in a counterattack. Though you can dodge it, either with good timing or by hanging on the wall just above the ground. His, what I call, DVD logo attack can be a pain in the ass, but the biggest challenge is usually getting out of the way when he starts it. You can do that either by jumping to the center of the stage or the top corners at first, but don't hang around there for long, because he will hit you. Where you'll do most of the damage to him is when he's firing shots at you. Maintain a steady barrage of shots, don't use any charged ones, and some of them will make it through and stagger him a little bit. Just keep the pressure up. Every shot that you fire that he blocks actually does knock him back a little bit, so if you need to get some distance from him, that's a good way of doing it. Launch Octopus says you're going down? I disagree. This one was fairly challenging because he has two different types of projectiles. His missiles and his other baby sort of fish things? I don't know. The baby fish things are very fast and they're harder to destroy and dodge than the missiles. Not only that, but they come at you from two different angles. The missiles are a bit easier to deal with. Just destroy the ones that are coming straight at you, parallel to the floor, and any that are coming from above, you can usually evade by dashing towards the direction they're coming from. One tip here, when he's doing his little whirlpool thing where he's invulnerable, try to time a charge blast to hit him as soon as he hits the ground. Sometimes he's only on the ground for like a split second before jumping to the other side and repeating the same attack. Boomer Kawanger, this slippery jerk. Again, I could have swapped Launch Octopus for Boomer Kawanger in my ranking, and it wouldn't have really made that much of a difference to me. Ultimately, it was his boomerang attack that puts him a little bit over. You have to make sure that you don't get between him and his boomerang, or it will hit you on the return. Most of the time in this game, we don't have to worry about attacks coming from behind us. Otherwise, just keep moving and try to time your shots to hit him when he phases in. 
If you stop moving, he'll phase right behind you. Also, one other thing to note, with his boomerang attack, it doesn't cover the entire distance of the screen, so remember that. And last on our list, the most difficult challenge for a no damage run for me was Sting Chameleon. So if you take the elusiveness of Boomer Kawanger, the mobility of Vile, and add a whip tongue with good range and some pain in the ass falling spikes, you've got this guy. His pattern isn't terribly difficult to figure out, but the falling spikes are the most challenging thing to deal with for a no damage run. I don't really have any tips on how to deal with it. What I did was just stare at the ceiling and wait for one to appear right over X, quickly move out of the way, and pray that you don't get in the path of another falling spike. In between his attacks, he'll cloak and move to another spot on the screen. If he moves to either top corner, he'll fire spikes at you either one or three times. They're not difficult to avoid, and while he's moving in position there, you can charge and get him as soon as he decloaks. Otherwise, he'll decloak close to you and try to hit you with his tongue, which has pretty good range. You can bait him to go to one side of the screen, and as soon as he starts to materialize, dash to the other side and hit him with a shot but your window to do that is really, really tight. So that's it, all Mega Man X bosses rated for a no damage buster only challenge. What did you think? Did you disagree with how I have these ranked? Are there any strategies that I might have missed? I'm aware that I may not be doing these in the best way, I'm just doing it in the way that works for me. So if there's anything that you feel I've missed, or anything else you'd like to see me do with this game, let me know in the comments. And until then, have a good one.